Hello, we're now going to go through three slightly weird sounding acronyms related to more types of networks. First of all, a LAN, which has been mentioned a couple of times in my previous videos on networking, just because it's such a um, fundamental concept perhaps. So LAN stands for Local Area Network. These acronyms you must learn because they're quite simple. LAN, Local Area Network. And that really tells you what it is. So the local aspect is what gives you that clue. So a LAN is a network connecting devices over a small geographical area. So these networks are pretty small, usually only in one building and usually owned by only one person or organization. So one family, one company, one school, these are local area networks. And that phrase, geographical area, is what defines LAN, MAN and WAN. So it's all about how big the network is. And there isn't a definite number. It's not like less than 10 meters, less than 20 meters, less than 30 meters. There isn't a number. It's just roughly how big it is. But like I say, usually one building owned by one person or organization. And for some examples, Wi-Fi, really common or really common wireless network. Bluetooth is not really a LAN, um, but Ethernet and Token Ring are two common wired LAN networks. A LAN can be client server, it can be peer to peer, that sort of unrelated to this concept. So we have evaluated each of, the, each of these before in previous videos. Um, Ethernet is what's used as your standard wired network nowadays. Token Ring is not really used because it has some issues we went through a couple of videos ago. The next type, we're getting progressively bigger, is a MAN. Silly acronym, um, it does stand for Metropolitan Area Network. Now Metropolitan, especially if you live in London, Metropolitan Police, Metropolitan Line, is all about cities. So a, a MAN, or M-A-N if you want to sound less silly, is a network connecting devices over a town or city. So over a, a bigger area, but we're not talking about countries, not talking about continents. So it's relatively small in the general scheme of things. So usually connecting up sets of multiple buildings. Um, by that I mean, it's not just usually two buildings, four buildings. It's usually a two groups or three groups or four groups of buildings. So we're not just talking about two buildings, but really there isn't a, like I say, definitive distinction. And they may still be owned by one person or organization. There might be some shared stuff going on. It does depend. Now, a really common example of this are things like universities, also hospitals, which might be grouped but separate. But universities often have multiple campuses. So this is a map of the University of Surrey, which is where I went. So I know this very well. It's got, it's got quite a big campus and a couple of smaller separate campuses. But because they're running the same software, using the same systems, there may well be a connection between the campuses, despite being a couple of miles apart. Um, the gap is much bigger than it looks like here. So, University of Surrey, I don't know. They might own a connection between the campuses. They might lease it. So it could be a, a very small lease line. Um, but the point is, it's one network separated by quite a big distance, but not a huge distance because a huge distance would be a WAN. So a WAN is a wide area network. So it's over a, a large geographical area. Again, no distinction, there's no, you know, 10 miles, 100 miles. It's just, we're talking about across the country, across a continent, across the world. So the main distinction is, which you can add in a definition, is that usually WANs involve infrastructure owned by more than one person or organization. Now, by infrastructure, we're talking about things like the cables, things like the routers, things like modems, other devices involved. There is some sharing going on, right? Not one company owns the entire set of hardware, right? You have different broadband providers. You've got different companies involved. You're watching YouTube right now. Of course, Google own YouTube. They own the servers involved. There's a lot of sharing going on. It's not just one company or organization. So in terms of examples we've covered so far, ADSL, ISDN, lease line, and fiber are all examples of what would usually constitute a WAN. Now I said lease line could be a MAN as well, but generally it's over quite a big distance and so would be a, a WAN. 
So the main thing to know is a WAN usually not only is it really big, but it involves some sharing of hardware and software because no one person or one company is big enough to own it all.